I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to put my brand new 2023 Mac Studio to the ultimate Logic Pro power test. I want to see just how many simultaneous virtual instruments this machine can run. But I also want to do a comparison to my 2010 Mac Pro. So we're going to do the same test on both machines and see the results. So to start, let's load up a new session on my 2010 Mac Pro, start adding software instruments and see what the limit is. Let's go. First thing, I'm gonna save this to my desktop just so we know that we're working off of the internal drive of the computer. I'm gonna make sure that the settings of the session are as fast as they can be. Buffer size is gonna be at 1024, so the highest it can go. The processing threads were also gonna be the highest on this computer, it's 12. The buffer range, we're gonna go large. Multi-threading, we're gonna go playback and live tracks. And that should be good, so let's apply that. And I wanna set this to 44.1. I wanna go with the lowest sample rate so we can get the most power out. Okay, last little setting tweak I wanna make. I'm gonna come up here to the transport and go to custom and then see this little CPU button here. If you double click it, you can open the performance meter. So this is gonna show us how much of each processing thread that Logic is using at any one given time. Theoretically, when it gets up to 100% and beyond it, that's when it will stop playback automatically and give you an error message. So we'll see how many tracks of RetroSynth we can add before that happens. So to get started, I'm just gonna record in one chord on this track and then I'm gonna double it. Here we go. Let's use one of my favorite chords, F major seven. Okay, so to make sure everything is nice and consistent, we'll quantize this to the grid, put it right at the top of the session, and then let's make this be 16 bars long. So hold shift to snap all the MIDI notes to the same length, drag it out to 16 bars, and then hold option click on the velocity to increase all of the velocities to 127. Okay, I am gonna turn my speakers off because if not, they might explode. So let's see what the performance meters look like with just one instance of RetroSynth. All right, pretty standard, just one tickling the meters a little bit. Now let's double this. And we're getting a little more processing threads happening. Now it looks like three are doing something. Nothing too crazy yet, but let's go up to 10 and see what that looks like. So in Logic Pro to double a track with the content in the track, option click on the track header and drag down. All right, so we've got 10 instances of RetroSynth on the Mac Pro, let's see how it does. And not too bad, it's using almost all the processing threads now, but it's maybe not even 10% on each of them. So you can see even on this old machine, Logic is super well optimized when it's using its own plugins to spread out the power usage across the processing threads. And yeah, it's playing this no problem. Let's go up to 50 tracks. All right, 50 tracks of RetroSynth, here we go. All right, and we're definitely using more power, maybe up to about 20% now, but no issue, still playing it just fine. How about 100 tracks? Again, no issues here. We're up to about 25% power on all the processing threads and it seems to be doing just fine. So let's get crazier. All right, I have added 500 tracks of RetroSynth to this session on my 2010 Mac Pro. Theoretically, this is only half of the limit of Logic Pro. Logic Pro can run 1000 software instrument tracks at a time but I'm not sure that this computer can do that. So let's see what the processing threads power looks like with 500 tracks of RetroSynth playing. All right, it is maxed out to 100%, but it is still playing. It has not stopped playback yet. I'm gonna let it roll. It's 100% across the threads. 
but it is still playing. So fair play to it, it is still playing. Let's add 100 more and see if that breaks it. All right, 600 tracks of retro synth, let's go. Oh, and there we go, system overload right away. You can see the processing threads meter jumped up right to 100 and it crashed in a second. So it looks like the limits of the Mac Pro as far as tracks of a Logic stock plugin like RetroSynth is somewhere between 500 and 600. Now, as I said, that's only half of the capacity of Logic Pro. So I'll be very interested to see if the Mac Studio can go all the way to 1,000 tracks. Drop a comment below if you think it can. All right, let's move on to the 2023 Mac Studio and see what this thing is really capable of. Note on this computer, we have 24 processing threads to work with as opposed to just the 12 on the Mac Pro. And with the M2 Ultra, we have those 16 high performance cores. So I think we're getting to a thousand tracks. I don't know, let me know what you think. All right, so we've got the one track of RetroSynth set up with our performance meter up. Let's see what it looks like. I'm assuming pretty similar with just the one core activated. Yep, exactly the same as before, just one processing thread, barely tickling, but that's not what we're here for. Let's start getting crazy. Here's 10. And yeah, barely tickling, a few more threads it looks like, but nothing crazy, as to be expected. Here's with 50. And we're now using all of the processing threads, but still barely getting up to maybe 10, five, 10% having absolutely no problems running 50 tracks of RetroSynth. Here's 100, and again, absolutely no problem, not taxing it at all, and unlike the Mac Pro, creating 100 tracks was instantaneous, didn't hiccup at all, did it automatically, super, super fast and smooth so far, so let's go for 500. All right, here we are with 500 tracks of retro synth. Again, no problem creating that many tracks, didn't beach ball or anything. And let's see what the performance meter looks like with 500 tracks playing at once. All right, so we're up over 25% on all the threads, but again, it's super smooth, nothing stuttering, the display's looking good. Super easy for this thing to play 500 tracks at once, no problem at all. So we know the Mac Pro capped out somewhere between 500 and 600, but I'm betting my life that this guy's gonna play a thousand tracks, no problem. Let's go for it. The full thousand tracks of RetroSynth, can it handle it? So we did get a beach ball when I tried to copy 500 tracks at once, but before I even finished explaining that to you, it fixed itself. That was maybe a few seconds and we now have 1,000 tracks of RetroSynth. So this is as many software instrument tracks as Logic can play at one time. Let's see how the Mac Studio handles it. And there we go, no problem at all, barely over 50% on the processing threads. Yeah, 1,000 tracks of RetroSynth, absolutely no problem. And just a note about the processing power of this computer in general versus the old one, this entire process to set this session up, get it to a thousand tracks, do those tests, I think I've been recording for maybe three minutes. It's seriously so incredibly fast. The last setup took me a good 20 minutes to go through all that process. This is just lightning fast, just clicking around the computer, opening things, creating new tracks. Everything is super snappy and super fast where the other one is so clunky and so slow. So really I, I can't articulate how much more enjoyable the experience of just using this computer is as opposed to the old one. So you can't really see it right now, but I have a veritable Apple store on my studio desk right now. I'm recording on an iPhone 13. I am monitoring on an Apple Watch Series 5. I have a iPad 3, I think, in front of me. I'm recording audio on a 2019 MacBook Pro. I obviously have the 2010 Mac Pro down here hooked up to this monitor, and I have the 2023 Mac Studio here hooked up to this monitor. 
of this Apple store I have on my desk right now, there is no doubt in my mind that the least enjoyable thing to use is the 2010 Mac Pro. I've been on the 2023 Mac Studio for about a week consistently now, and just plugging this thing in and booting it back up and using it again today for the first time, I wanted to pull my hair out. It's so slow, it's so sluggish, everything takes forever, and this 2023 Mac Studio is just, it's just a joy, a joy to use, honestly. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I know it was a little bit of a crazy concept and definitely not a real to life test, but it does go to show you just how powerful the M2 Ultra chip is and how great the 2023 Mac Studio is as a recording studio computer. If you did like the video, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you need help with mixing production or Logic Pro, send me a message. I would love to help you out. Thanks.